All right, uh, thanks everybody for coming. Uh, my name's Jim. Um, this is uh, my daughter, Ella. Why don't you wave, Ella? Um, she's gonna feature in the presentation, so I wanted to point her out. Uh, I'm presenting my project VR64 for the Commodore 64. I think it's the first virtual reality goggles for the Commodore 64. And uh, here's my contact information down there uh, on Lemon and uh, a Gmail account I have. So we have a half hour to do this, so we should probably just jump right into it. And I'll try to hopefully leave some room for questions at the end or whenever. So, uh, of course, VR is really popular right now. <laughs> uh, it's the craze of the moment. Even PayPal has ads for VR, which doesn't make much sense to me. <laughs> but then here's my buddy uh, playing an uh, uh, early version of the game. Uh, I think VR usually makes people look kind of silly. <laughs> so uh, um, that's kind of fun. You can laugh at people while they do it. And this is uh, like the Google Cardboard, you know, it's very traditional, what probably a lot of us have played with. You put your cell phone in there, it's got two different views, and uh, it splits your eyes between those views. So what, what I've done here is uh, very similar to that. So really, uh, this is all an extension of my daughter's science fair project. Um, so she did a uh, whole science fair on virtual reality goggles and you know how they work. Uh, we uh, made uh, VR goggles from cardboard, and we just bought the lenses off uh, Amazon. Um, made a 3D still image, and then even made a 3D movie. And how do we make the 3D movie? Well, we split it in the two sides. Uh huh. And what did we? Uh, oh. Yeah, so we took a ping pong paddle and taped two phones to it and walked around the house and got a, a 3D video and uh, it was pretty hard to sync up the two videos, but it kind of worked. So that was cool. So, I mean, the magic to this VR stuff is the lens that's in there. Um, you know, if, if the display is here and it's presenting something here, but once these rays go through the lens to the eye, it looks like the object's way out here. So it, uh, the lenses are really the magic to this thing. And I think it's pretty much basically the same uh, technology as those uh, Viewmaster slideshows, except the stuff moves. <laughs> um, so I just, both these slides, instead of recreating them, I stole them right off your poster, Ella. Um, <laughs> yes. Guilty. So, you know, another part of the whole VR thing is, you know, you, you, both, you have both your eyes, of course, if you have three objects in a row, if uh, your right eye will see a different image than your left eye. So the right eye will, can look past this and see the star on the right side, but the left eye uh, sees the star on the left side. And when your mind uh, interprets all that, it creates the depth. Okay, so uh, enough on the, the science or how it works. I'll just talk about the project. So here is the uh, VR64. Um, so what I did is I bought a cheap $10 off-the-shelf uh, VR goggles. You're supposed to put your phone in there. Um, but then I installed a 5-inch uh, LCD that's uh, driven by composite. So now we can plug our Commodore 64 in there, or even any of those other 8-bit computers, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, drive, uh, drive the screen. So, uh, so uh, and we'll see that in a moment. Um, so I did have to cut some uh, area back here and use a lot of hot glue and, and things to, to build these, but it really, I didn't have to do that much. It was, a little bit of mechanics and no electronics at all. So it was pretty, uh, pretty cool. I had thought about building my own in the beginning, like the whole mechanics of it, but if I can get that for $10, why would I even do that? And I did, uh, I did kill a couple LCDs in the process, <laughs> but uh, I finally found one that worked with the uh, composite signal on these old computers and, uh, and worked well. 
So I'm putting up a blog on the internet that kind of has uh, some demo. Again, it's hard to demo this uh, because you really need the goggles to demo it. Um, but I also have a build video and things like that on there. Okay. So this is just kind of describing how it works on the Commodore. Um, you get a separate view for each eye. Um, I split the screen so it's only 19 columns on each view. So the middle two columns are, are dead space. Those don't get illuminated. Um, so that gives you a uh, whopping 152 by 200 pixels per eye on high res or 76 by 200 uh, for multicolor, which is uh, what I generally used. Well, so I generally use multicolor, obviously, for the, or for the backgrounds and stuff. Sometimes I could use uh, high res for the sprites. What's that? HD. Yeah, it's almost HD. <laughs> um, so, you know, there's, there's probably a lot of science behind this, but I didn't spend too much time on the science. There's probably, uh, you know, when you put objects on the screen, if you want them to appear at a, at a normal depth, they probably should be uh, at the same distance as your eyes. But I think these VR goggles with the focusing and things like that uh, uh, adjust that. But what I found is if I just put the two objects on the uh, screen uh, at the same distance, uh, it looked like a normal depth, so I just went with it. Um, so then the bottom bullet point, so this is the whole key to it. If you have two objects on the screen and you move them closer to the center, your eyes uh, interpret that not as those objects move, but as those objects are getting closer to you. So I'll have another screen on that. And so I did a lot of experiments, and I figured that I could move like a sprite 10 pixels to the center each, so a, t a movement of 20 pixels into your eye that just looked like the object was coming closer to you. So really the, pic the sprites or whatever the objects would be 20 pixels closer than, they, uh, than you want them to appear, but they would appear uh, closer to you. So about 13 pixels uh, movement, it started getting, I started losing the 3D effect and hurting, hurting my eyes. So I uh, kind of limited it to 10 pixels for the movement, well, for the depth. So this is an illustration. So um, if we move those sprites to the center, 10 pixels, you would see them as moving towards you. And not, uh, and not actually moving left to right. So I, in the beginning, I also moved, started with two objects and moved them away from uh, the eyes. Um, and that was creating a, a cool depth effect also. Um, but as I started like creating a program that had ones moved further away and ones moved further in, it was really confusing my eyes and, 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 and uh, causing uh, me to lose the 3D effect. So I started thinking about that more. And uh, you know, we looked at some of those views with like the rays traced of uh, the viewing. And uh, I think I know what it is now, is if an object is close to you, you know, your eyes have to kind of look in. But if an object is way far away, your eyes kind of start to approach parallel, but they never go outward. So I ended up, uh, yeah, so I ended up not using that effect of moving objects away from the center uh, more than the normal position. Kind of make sense? All right, so um, I want to do a demonstration. Uh, Evan. Evan. Evan volunteered to be our demo guy. You've never uh, used this before, right? No, no, sir. Okay. I'm not a planted audience member. Yes. I hardly know your name. So sit, <laughs> sit down here. And uh, are you you're familiar with the Commodore? A little bit. Okay. So uh, when we get to the game portion, you'll use these top two keys, which you can feel because they're the top two keys. One and the, one and the arrow. Yeah, and then these four function, function keys. keys. Okay. okay. You can go ahead and put that on. Okay. And I will switch us to... Okay, so I, sh 
Um, okay. Yeah. Helen, going Helen Keller here. Okay. That's right. Hey, lay off the blind side. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what, were what were the odds of that? <laughs> yeah. I apologize. Okay, so uh, I put together this game called Street Defender. Uh, Nico did the music for it, so that's awesome. Um, and but there's a couple demos on here that we'll look at uh, before we get to the game. Okay. So I'm gonna have you move your hand for a second. Yeah, there you go. Oh wait a minute, I don't want to do that. Yeah. So uh, I made a video game, and we'll demo that in a minute. But I also tried to make some 3D images. Here, I'm gonna go again. I'm just going to do this one. OK, what do you see? Uh, a Commodore 64? <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, I took these pictures of uh, objects, uh, a left and right view, and obviously they're being presented on the screen. Oops, I got the blue border on. That's probably distracting you, sorry. Um, and I think this kind of works. Does the keyboard look a little bit closer to you than the monitor? Yes. OK. So uh, I didn't do much with the graphics. I just took pictures and imported them in. Let's do one more. I think this one has a little bit better effect. But it definitely appears as, as one image. There's no blurring there. This happens more, more often than you might think. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see on this, uh, it's Tabasco sauce, obviously. Um, the point on the uh, label is moved towards the center, so that's going to appear a little bit closer to your eyes. Yeah. OK, so let's move on to demoing the game, okay. get to the, the meat of it. I, I actually did those images last, and they kind of worked. Um, <laughs> But certainly, I think it would be better if uh, I had found a program that would take an a, a image and do more of a, uh, a high-res dithered version of the images. But uh, I just got the multicolor version there. So we're loading the game now. How are we doing on time? OK, we're doing good. OK, so it, it says adjust your VR goggles. There's one knob up here that you can okay. fiddle with on the top of your VR goggles. But uh, it, seems, it seems good. OK, so press space bar. OK, let's sit here for a second. Um, so what's going on? What do you see? Um, I see VR64 space bar when ready. And is any of it a uh, different depth? The, the VR64 seems to um, be, be a little bit closer. OK, and uh, are they centered on top of each other, the logo and the text? Yes. OK, so everybody in the room would say, no, they're not centered. The VR64 looks like it's moved towards the center, right? So these, and these are all created with sprites. So those being moved towards the center are really just appearing to him to be closer. All right, yeah, press no, space bar. Yeah, the VR64 is, is definitely much closer now. I think my eyes are adjusting to it. OK, cool, right. press space bar. And it's loading a little bit more. So this is this is harder to, to see, but uh, is anything closer to you? Okay. So yeah. So yeah. So 
uh, it's harder to see here, but these are shifted towards the center, even though they didn't start at the middle of the screen, those texts, and, uh, and they're creating the 3D effect. All right, when you're ready, you can press the space bar. Um, so this is loading the game. So you're going to use the top two keys to rotate left and right. Okay. And then the four keys on the right, uh, the top one's punch, knife, bullet, and uh, grenade. You can only rotate. You can't move. Now you can shoot those guys with your uh, function keys. So does it look 3D? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so you can see here that the background. Yeah, let's sit on, stay on this view for a second, or one of these views on the streets. You can see the background is here, but the front ends of these buildings are shifted towards the center. This is uh, longer than this, so that's creating a 3D effect, so the front of those buildings look closer to him. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, you've been retired. Yeah. So he got a score of 13. Um, we're, so I'm going to be demoing this game at the uh, at the station, and uh, I'm going to have a contest today. Anybody who gets whoever gets the highest score uh, gets a VR goggles headset. All right. So thank you for demoing. So I just have a couple more slides. We'll uh, turn off Nico's funky music. So please stop by the my booth and uh, try those uh, that game. Okay. So we looked at those two images and then the game, which uh, honestly the game's a lot more fun than the images. The images for just kind of more of an experiment. So, you know, some things that I found out when I was doing this, um, it's kind of hard to see the edges of the uh, VR goggle, so keep the action in the center. Um, you know, a, uh, a Google Cardboard one or something like that, you know, you'll move your head and it'll detect the motion and move with you. Of course, this is uh, not going to do that, so. <laughs> Uh, we need to keep the action in the center. Um, it is driven by composite video, so the what we saw on the screen is sharper than what you saw. Um, so you really have to kind of think about the stuff we used to struggle with when we display stuff on TVs and like the fuzziness and the colors next to each other. Um, things changing depth on a black background seem to be a lot. Uh, easier for the eye to see once you have different color pixels on top of each other. Sometimes those enemies get kind of on top of each other and they get a little blurry, but when they have some separation, it's real clear, the depth. And uh, <laughs> this is kind of a joke, these last two. Um, every time I uh, see like Oculus Rift or some cool VR system, they're like, oh, I have a roller coaster simulator or I have a haunted house thing. And uh, I just feel like they should focus on games. Let's play some games with this stuff. So what's next? Um, you know, it'd be really cool if somebody figured out how to drive something like this with S-Video instead of composite. I know uh, people replace the LCDs and their SSXX64 with, uh, they replace the CRTs with LCDs, and uh, they figured out how to engage the S video. So maybe those techniques could be brought forward. And uh, it would be cool if somebody wrote a 3D VR demo, you know, and uh, yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to thank a bunch of people. Uh, and I, I uh, was on Lemon 64 and this is really, this is the, my third 
computer game I've ever written and only the second uh, machine language assembler program I've ever written. So I had a lot to learn and, 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 and it, was, it was fun to learn it and these guys on Lemon really helped me along. Nico uh, provided some great music, so that's awesome. Uh, Robin uh, helped us with uh, playing uh, PAL music on a NTS me T machine. Um, but the game works on both PAL and NTSC. And uh, Ella, thank you for letting me steal all your science fair stuff. <laughs> and my wife, thank you for putting up with my midlife crisis hobby. <laughs> She's about a season ahead of me in Game of Thrones now, and she threatened if I keep playing with this stuff, she's going to start blurting out people who died. <laughs> okay, so how would you get one of these? Um, you really should build your own. It's, it's, the construction's pretty easy. It's fun. Um, and I'll have a build video on my blog. Um, there is going to be a special one-of-a-kind branded one that's going to be in the auction tonight. Um, so everybody bid on that. and. Uh, raise some money for the show. And uh, then we're doing the contest at my uh, area out in the show floor. And whoever uh, scores the highest score and submits it through the rules out there uh, will win a headset tomorrow. So that's it. Any questions? Thank you. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I assume you just kind of, uh, it's got a focus uh, button on the top. I assume you just kind of split the difference. I don't know. Yeah. I can sort of answer that. We have five at our house. Well, we have like five fives in our house. But um, the, uh, since, since the image is, so, so the reason you need correction is because your your eyes are not seeing something that's far away because they're not focusing on something far away. But in most VR headsets, the image is still right in front of you and designed to be beamed at you. So taking off your glasses is uh, usually okay, um, unless your vision's like really bad. Uh, but in that case, most VR headsets are designed to just let you leave your glasses on. So so you can usually leave your glasses on and use a headset. Yeah. And that would be fine. Yeah, okay. I wear my glasses with my you know, PlayStation VR. Yeah. I just leave my glasses right on, and it's fantastic. Any other questions? When's the Amiga version come out? <laughs> I only do 8-bit. <laughs> and I think Amiga actually had one back in the day. Uh, the Commodore 64 never did, from what I can see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, thank you, everybody.